Good, good. Good for y'all? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> welcome, welcome, everybody. Good morning, and it's cold for me, so apologize. I'm wearing my jacket. Um, my name is Tiffany of Tiffany Gordon Cosplay. I am a full-time costume and prop fabricator as well as educator on YouTube. Tons and tons of tutorials there, so I recommend going there. I also am from Austin, Texas, and I flew here, so this is my first time in this area, so thanks for having me. <laughs> But uh, this panel is how to plan your next cosplay build. It is specifically going to be going over for building a cosplay, not necessarily buying a finished cosplay, but it can come in handy either way for whatever your cosplay needs are. To first start off for choosing your cosplay you want to build, I highly recommend choosing something you actually like and not necessarily what is always trending. It's good to, if you're going to actually be building a costume to be interested in the subject, you're gonna probably be looking at it for at least a week to maybe a few years. And if you don't like that character, maybe stay away from it. But that is like always the biggest thing. For me, I know that some people, at least for the competition side of cosplay, if you don't like the character, you can tell in your work and your craftsmanship that you didn't like the character or you didn't like the build. So at least choose something you like. The next process, at least for me, for choosing and doing a cosplay build is research. And that is where once you figure out, we're gonna say Jinx. Jinx is in Jinx, that's gonna be our big thing today. But for me, when I chose that I wanted to do Jinx, it specifically was from the show Arcane, not necessarily from the game. So when I did my research, I did get in-game reference images. I got 360 view on it and screenshot it. And I also got from the show, all of the many images that I could do. I also like to look at fan art because specifically if you're looking at anime, you might not always see the back of the character and fan art can give you a really good interpretation of what other people might think and can help you kind of visualize more of, okay, I wanna make this one have this cool thing on the back. I don't know if it's actually there, but this person did a wonderful job creating it in their art and I get inspiration from that. It can also help you with visualizing different colors, different makeup aspects. So with fan art, like you see a lot of, not necessarily the more graphic, like arcane version, you can see the more pretty version in fan art for makeup. So it kind of depends. You get a lot of inspiration from that. Also for research, if you can find like an already made action figure of it, those are really, really good for looking at because it's already a physical thing and it's just so much more helpful for looking around. Um, you don't necessarily have to buy whatever action figure. Like if you're gonna make a Gundam, that's really good to look at because then you can see how do wheels attach? How, how does everybody or all the pieces fit? Other stuff for research would be looking to see if anybody has made that cosplay before. And you can take inspiration from other other Jinx characters. So obviously I'm not the only one that's cosplayed this. There's also like pre-made cosplays of this that you can look at for inspiration. How does a manufacturer, like how did they style the wig for mass production? Because it's probably gonna be easier for you to look at or also looking at like other cosplayers like uh, Kimpatsu did this or she's working on it right now or something, but she's done lots of other Jinx. And you can take inspiration from what they did and also looking into like Etsy and other cosplayer shops. Sometimes they have like fabric, like this is my fabric. All the tattoos are fabric that I have in my fabric store. And that makes it a lot easier if you can find those materials. Looking to see if anybody has tutorials on how they made a prop can also help you with your creation or if they have any patterns or blueprints. And that may be a route instead of you having to figure out how to do something 100% is to help follow a guide, especially if you're newer into 
the crafting part of the cosplay field. So I always recommend doing that. The next step, at least for my process, is I like to make a Word document list of every single part of that character. So that way I have like, so for Jinx, I would look at a reference image and then in my Word document, it'd be like, okay, there's a wig I need. There's going to be wig accessories. There's going to be, if I need contact lenses, I'll put it there. There's a shirt with like straps. There's the tattoos. There's a belt. There's pants with a, a secondary random pant accessory thing. Um, you've got your boots. And then I also put like props on there. And this way I am organized on all of the aspects of that cosplay. And this will make it easier for you later down the road, figuring out what you need to do for it and what resources you've got to get. But that's like a big thing. And then you can study looking at your reference image and seeing kind of which of these pieces are part of it. And at that point, you can kind of determine, like, do you want to make a wig from scratch? Or do you want to buy a pre-made wig? Do you want to make shoes from scratch? Or do you want to buy pre-made shoes that you can add accessories onto? Same with gloves. Gloves are a pain. I highly recommend just buying gloves and altering them. Like, especially if you're just starting in cosplay. You can make them, but they, are a little bit of a hassle. <laughs> but yeah, that's always a good good spot to start. And then once you kind of have that, like your list made of all of the parts of your cosplay, you kind of want to find out your timeline. Are you making this for a specific convention? Is the convention in a week? If it's a week, you probably want to buy a lot more pieces for that cosplay rather than make 100% of it from scratch or design custom fabric because shipping is going to take a bit. If your convention is going to be in like a year or you have a contest you want to do it for. But yeah, that'll give you a good kind of estimate of like how long you can work on certain pieces, what pieces you want to buy or find local. I know for me, for doing certain commissions, if I have two weeks to work on something, I can't really order more materials. So you'd have to like drive to places and get those materials or work with what you got. You can also hire other cosplay artists for making specific parts of a costume. So if you don't want to make a wig, but you want to make the rest of it, you can hire somebody to do it for you. And that's something where you want to kind of know your time frame of like whatever you want to do this costume for. The next part for me at least is then I make my shopping list and <laughs> shopping list again is like what parts I want to buy pre-made. Also at this point is what materials I need to buy to make that costume. So for this fishbone, this is all EVA foam and CPVC pipes and for this I need to get more EVA foam to make this. Also, if it's airbrush painted, did I need to buy any more paint? It kind of makes you know like what spots you want to get more materials for. For Jinx, with this one, again, I said I custom designed the pant fabric as well as all the tattoos, and that takes time, but having that on my material list of this I need to get in design, and then doing like ordering contacts and all. For materials, this one you'll probably will like a lot, but again, me being in Texas, so a lot of this is going to be more local to my area and you most likely have most of the stores here, but maybe not. But for me, fabric, I typically get all my fabric from Joanne's Fabric. I will do spoon flour for custom fabric that I design, but you can also, if you don't want to design your own fabric, that's a good place to go to get already designed fabric. Specifically, if you're doing like Demon Slayer, there are tons and tons of Demon Slayer fabrics there. Some in my shop, some from other people, and there's other different animes there too, as well as games. 
So I highly recommend going there. A more expensive fabric place would be Mood Fabric. I only go there order online because there's nothing like that near me. But for like really, really specific fabric and they tend to be a bit more pricey and then I think you have to order like a minimum of two yards. So just consider that in shipping. Another place is Spandex House. So for cosplay and for stretchy fabric, two-way and four-way stretch fabric, well, that's your place. So they have that for denim, for lace, for uh, just about like any type of fabrics that will be stretchable. Of course there's Amazon, hit or miss with fabric there. Highly recommend if you don't know fabric types, go to a local fabric store and just look at generic, like this is what cotton feels like. This is what muslin feels like and things like that. So you can at least know if you're ordering online, what that material is gonna feel like. And also going in person, stretch the fabric both ways. So if it only stretches in one way, that's two way. If it stretches in both ways, that's four way. And I'll give you a good idea of how that material is going to work if you're gonna be sewing. Specifically again, with ordering online. Other places you can go, Goodwill, if you have that over here. So Goodwill, you can buy specifically for doing your patterning, bed sheets, cheap, cheap fabric. And then you can just do all your patterns for your fabric pieces with that. And then you don't have to buy like $5 a yard for doing your pattern. It's just like, here's $2 for a bed sheet and it lasts you a long time. Same with shower curtains. Those are good as well. And then Hobby Lobby is also a place you can get fabric from. Uh, again, it's more hit or miss, but uh, those are my main places for fabric. For leather, if you're gonna work in that, Tandy Leather. That is my number one favorite place. If you're going to get leather, go in person. Don't order leather, like actual hides online. You wanna be able to see it in person. The reason being is it is an animal product and one piece of hide can vary from this size to this size. You also have like for cow hides branding marks. So if the branding mark is in the center of your hide, that might ruin your patterning um, versus if it's on the edge. Leather also comes in different thicknesses. In the center, it's going to typically be thicker than on the edges because how they do it is they'll stretch it out and it gets smaller towards the edges as it pulls. For small scrap pieces of leather, you can get it at Hobby Lobby. Normally there's like tiny little little pieces and scrap fat or scrap leather, but I highly recommend for leather going in person to Tandy. For EVA foam, which is what this is made out of. Lightweight foam. It's not like the craft foam, this is like actual good quality foam. Go for good quality foam. You'll get better results. My favorite place is TNT Cosplay Supply. They ship all over the US, but they are based in Texas. You know, kind of close for me. <laughs> but their foam, in my opinion, is one of the best. It's gonna have the least amount of kind of imperfections with the foam, and it'll give you the best quality. Where if you're going to, let's say, Joann's or if you're going to Hobby Lobby. The foam there is not good. <laughs> so last last minute resorts, um, I would do that, but for better quality, I highly recommend TNT Cosplay Supply. You can also do SKS Props, which I believe is somewhere up here, in, up north, but I'm not 100% sure. In all of these places, you can also, besides just EVA foam, you can get foam clay from. A lot of them do also have foam working tools and contact cement glue and things like that. So it's kind of like whatever store you like, you can get the rest of your foam working tools from as well. Of course, there is Amazon, but again, it's hit or miss. I do have to say, avoid Hobby Lobby foam dowel rods. They're awful, awful, awful. Um, if you see me tomorrow in my Vegeta armor, just look at the trim and oh, it's bad, it's bad. It cracks, you can't heat treat it. But when you paint it and you do any type of work on it, it just doesn't work. So go to more like Teen Teen SKS 
props for uh, any foam dowel rods. For 3D printing filament specifically, I go on Amazon for this. I personally have a Prusa i3 Mark 2.5 3D printer, and I'm not gonna recommend printers here. I'm not gonna recommend where to buy your printer. I highly recommend doing research for that. But for filament, Amazon is your best place. For Warbla, you're gonna want to do costly supplies. They're basically like the Warbla warehouse, and that's where you can get the brown Warbla, the black Warbla, the clear uh, transfer art Warbla, and then they have like a bunch of other ones, but I'm not too familiar with the other ones offhand. And then of course, Amazon. I will say it's for Amazon most of the time, you can buy a lot of these materials there, but it's gonna be smaller. So for EVA foam, you're not gonna get like a full sheet of foam. It's gonna be like two feet by two feet most of the time. And so your price might be cheaper, but when it comes to foam work, typically for having less cracks and seams, you want larger pieces of foam. So like for a breastplate, for like the under part, you want it to wrap all the way around. So you only have the one seam on the back and it's the least amount of seams for you to hide. Where if you're buying a small piece of foam, you can still work with it. You just will have to have a lot more seams and then it's a lot more visible that you're gonna have to fix all of that or you're just gonna have a seam there. So just words of thought. For prop making hardware. So this being like, CPVC pipes, so like the little piping in here, you can get uh, PVC pipes and then all of the threading systems. So like a lot of my swords, I'll have it where it has a metal threading system to lock the two pieces together because I get a fly. And for that, I'll get them typically at like Home Depot or Lowe's. I don't typically buy too much of my hardware on Amazon just because I want to see in person and make sure that this is the actual size. I can visualize like a two inch like pipe, but when it goes smaller and I want to make sure my threading systems will interlock into them, I have a hard time visualizing that on like the interwebs, but yeah. So I always say, in person, also for getting like carbon fiber uh, tubing, I'll do that on Amazon, but I've worked with that a lot. For paint, Amazon, that's where I go. Otherwise you can do Michaels or Hobby Lobby, but Amazon I find, at least for airbrush painting, I can get it there. I know they're gonna have more than the last bottle. For contact lenses, I do Unique Soap, and they are, I believe Korean, but I'm not 100% sure. So you just be aware if you're ordering contact lenses from them, it's gonna take probably a month for it to come in. For them, they do not require eye prescriptions. So be aware, do not hurt your eyes or anything, but most other contact lenses companies will require that for safety with the US. I don't wear contacts at all, except for cosplay, so even if you don't need them, a lot of companies will require you still to have a prescription from the eye doctor saying you do not need it and you can get a 0.001. So just be warned with that. But uh, Unixo is basically a provider of a bunch of different contact lenses brands. So they do not make specific ones. They have like SweetieCon, who is a a specific manufacturer. And then they have, um, ooh, what's the other ones? I don't remember the other ones. I've worked with Sweetie Condo, so I know them offhand. But they bring in a bunch, and so you have a much wider um, amount of contact lenses to get. And not just like blue and yellow. They'll have like the spider web ones, and you'll have all your Naruto ones and things like that. For wigs, so this one right now is an L email wig. It did not look like this when I got it. So I did a bunch of work to it, but they are a very, very cheap wig company. Same with Unique So, very just pre-made cosplay wigs. So they're more like on the budget wigs. You can get okay results with them, but I wouldn't recommend them for if you want to go full wig styling. But for actual wig ones, Epic Cosplay Wigs, 
and also Arda wigs. I typically will do Epic over Arda just because Arda is normally out of stock on everything. And so I just don't ever get to use them. For wigs, I do prefer lace front just because it's easier to glue it to your head. And for me, I have a small head and all the wigs like to slide on me, even with the adjustable straps and everything. So it's just easier. Other place would be Pinky Paradise. They are also in Korea. So it takes a little bit of a longer time to get here, but if you're interested in more of the Lolita wig style and for more fashion wigs, they're the place to go. And of course, Amazon. If you saw me in Starlight yesterday, that was an Amazon wig that was like 20 bucks. And then I just dyed the roots, like really affordable, but those are very hit or miss. So be aware that of the picture you see on Amazon may not be the wig that you actually receive. <laughs> if you are wanting to do any facial hair or any fancy eyebrows, go to, I always have a hard time saying their name, K-R-Y-O-L-A-N. They're like a makeup company um, for special effects and FX. I think it's like Cryolon maybe? I always have trouble with it. They're a really, really good place and they're like actual like movie industry, get your facial hair. For ears and for horns that are not just the cheap plastic hook around your ear, like the actual ones that you want to glue on and they look like they're part of your ear. For this, it is, no. mispronounce this as well. Aradani costumes, A-R-A-D-A-N-I. And that's where I get like any of my own ears that I actually want to look like they belong to me and not just the cheap plastic ones. For gloves and for full on body suits, Amazon, best place to go. You get the most wide variety of sizes as well as we love colors and we love colors is a bit more expensive that's what the gloves i'm wearing now but these are full ones that go up they did have fingertips and they only have uh so the ones one seam there and they're really nice form-fitting gloves the best gloves i've ever had and i have really tiny hands and like perfect for me and they do full on body suits and with the least amount of seams so i highly recommend them but they are a lot more expensive and then for shoes i'll do dsw because i'm cheap and i like to be comfy in my cosplay shoes that i'm gonna wear all day long even though most of the time they're in like stiletto high heels but steve mountain and then of course amazon Amazon is really good for cosplay shoes for just generic ones. You can get them for like 10, 15 bucks. Use it as a base and you're not really that afraid then to destroy it if you have to make a custom shoe for whatever character. So like, ee, my shoes, Amazon, they were like 10 bucks and then I just changed the lace and I cut them to the size I want and then I added EVA foam parts to it. And then they're also like a lot much taller because I'm a short person and I like to have heights in my costumes. So yeah, that's pretty much for the uh, materials of where I get them. All right, and back to planning your cosplay build stuff. <laughs> so if you remembered, I talked about how I made a list of each part of the costume. Well, at this point, now that I know where I'm going to get all my materials from, and I know that, okay, I'm buying this wig. I don't have to worry about custom styling this. Okay, I've got my fabric coming in for my pants, so I don't need to design that. Or here's scrap material. Always, if you have fabric, look at your scrap fabric box first before you go and buy. That save you a lot of money. Once I kind of figure out all the stuff that I have to actually make, I then, I'm kind of really organized when it comes to cosplay, but I then will make a list under each of those pieces of the steps of how I'm going to make it. This way I have an already to-do list. So for like fabric, let's say for the top. 
So I need to buy the fabric for the top. And then after that, you're gonna need to make a pattern. So are you buying the pattern or do you need to custom make your pattern? After that, you're gonna need to cut your fabric. You're going to need to sew it. And then you're gonna need to add any snaps or if there's any Velcro pieces you have to add, like Velcro from a belt or any zippers or if you have to attach other pieces, I'll put this on a list under that specific piece. So that was for the shirt. And this way I have it really organized and I can see by doing this for every single piece on the costume, it might seem like a lot of a lot of work, but then you can know. And if there's any steps like specifically for EVA foam props, if you gotta do gluing, instead of gluing one small piece at a time and then you have to walk away, if you already have all those pieces cut, you can glue them all at once. And then of course, respirator, and you can get it all done a lot faster by just having this organization of it. For like EVA foam stuff, so we'll say, well, fish bone. So for this, I make all my patterns myself, but it's totally fine to buy your own patterns from somebody else, from Etsy. There's a lot of places you can get them from. And so pattern, cut foam to sand all of the pieces. So you have to sand any of the edges, so you have to round them. Gluing all the pieces heat treating. So heat treating your EVA foam with a heat gun. For me, I like to prime my pieces with Plasti Dip. And again, having this on your list, if you're doing multiple foam pieces, even if they are, let's say, tiny little pieces, it's a lot easier to Plasti Dip all of your pieces at once rather than doing one this day and one that day, just because it takes such a long time in the drying process as well it'll just go a lot faster. Then paint specifically for all of my, so I do have a mini gun. I just didn't fly here with it. So for like the pistol, fishbone and the mini gun, all of the paint scheme is all the same. So when painting, I like to do all of my painting when they, when you want it to be all cohesive at the same time. So all of the gold, it's like a custom mixture. It's like four different colors of gold here to get that specific color. And I want to make sure that it's on all of my pieces so they all look alike. Rather than paint it here and then I finish this and then I go to my next prop, like let's say two months later. Oh, I forgot how I made this color or if you have to custom make a color. It just makes it a lot better if you do it at once for those specific ones. But the next part for me on my list would be to seal the piece. And then of course, attach the piece if it has to go on, if you have to do any Velcro, do your Velcro at that point. But that's kind of how I do my list. So for that, it would be like for the wig, the steps of the wig. And then for like the contacts, it's just contacts and then the shirt. And to make it even more organized, I do a color coordinating uh, system where each of the specific pieces of that cosplay, if I have not started it, I highlight it red. So I know I need to work on this, especially if you have a deadline coming soon. That'll really make it so you know, I kind of need to work on this. For anything that you have to buy, so like contact lenses, I will typically just make the letters red because that can be in like, so for a shirt, if I have to buy the fabric, I'll just, make the, the letters red for that saying by fabric and then all the other steps would still be like the black font. Yellow for me is in progress that I have started it at some point, at least got something physical from it and not just I have a paper printed out for the pattern. And then green for me would be that it is finished. And by doing that, once it's all done, you can delete the steps. And then you have your checklist for conventions when you like have your costume put away in storage for a year. You just have to print out your checklist again and then remember, oh yeah, this one has a wig. It's kept in a different room from the rest of the costume. I also put on like my list any undergarments. So like if you need to wear leggings under it or if you have, so like a lot of my gloves, not these, but for other cosplays. I'll use the same pair of gloves for multiple cosplays, which is save money. So that way I'll have it on there and I'll know that I need to go and get it out of this box or whatever. 
but that keeps it really organized for me for just like preparing for a cosplay build. Um, I know there's other people that do it differently, but that's like my personal way that I've been doing now for years and it just seems to work best for me. It depends on the character. I mean, all like for shoes, for instance, like if I look at a character and I'm just like, for, uh, so uh, Sara from Genshin Impact, her shoes are like that tall and it's just one spike. I'm not doing that. So I found like a shoe that I can work in like the typical geisha shoes, the wooden ones, but it has the tube on the bottom. It's still kind of hard to walk in, but much easier. And so I take like the, my own like interpretation of that. I know for Jinx, so this one specifically, you'll look at different images and it has a different belt buckle. And this was my version of it. But I mean, it's totally fine for you to make it. If you're gonna do it for a costly contest, just tell them like you couldn't find reference images for that. And like for a judge, it's actually really cool to see how you thought about it and how you interpreted yourself. <laughs> a little bit. I'm, I've made a few massive wings. And uh, after doing a few, I now make every single costume fit inside a suitcase just because I fly a lot more. Um, but for me, for storing my costumes, so for here, like I'll have Ziploc baggies that are clear and each of my wigs will fit into it. Uh, they have their own little bag and I'll put what the wig is, uh, the character, and then what year I made it because if you made something in like 2008, I still have cosplays from then. The quality from then to now may have changed just a wee bit. With like, so all of the fabric pieces, I'll put them in a Ziploc baggie also. I never like to store things touching other costumes just because, so this one, like this part, this is all painted. And the paint over years sometimes will go onto different materials. I've had, for instance, my Nuka Girl costume from Fallout. It is white with red stripes. The red fabric decided to dye all the white fabric and it can never be worn again. And that was when I used to hang them up in closets. So anything that was next to it got a lovely red line as well. Did you make individual garment bags and I've had a few that I used to store like that but honestly it just became more hassle so now with everything in ziploc baggies and you just bring a steamer to a convention like a handheld one gets all your wrinkles out totally fine and then I have plastic storage bins that they can just fit in a closet and I'll do like basking tape on the front to just say it has a jinx in it it has Ariel it has like all these other costumes, so I can easily just find it and pull it up. So this one, so it comes part in the two. And then for this, when I design my costumes and my props, I design it to my specific suitcase. So you want to invest, if you're going to be flying, if you're traveling by car, it's totally fine, just throw it in the car. But um, if you're going to fly with it, you want to get actual suitcases that are okay to fly, that aren't oversized. I, I learned that the hard way of getting a travel trunk and it was a little bit too large and you always have to pay extra. I now have a Pelican suitcase. They're a bit more expensive, but it's one of those where a lot of suitcases, they come in the center. So your storage on each side is only that big, but with like a Pelican suitcase, it's a trunk, so it's that high, and then it's just a small lid that opens, so you can put everything in here. But uh, this this fits just in a normal suitcase, and like that's the height of my suitcase, so it just easily fits in there. But anything larger than that, like if I'm making so my uh, Sacred Shield Charlotte shield, it's from the ground to here, this height. I can't fly with it, so it's only for Texas cons, but just designing beforehand to fit them in a suitcase. Also with foam, if you have like gauntlets and stuff, you can put them inside of each other. So when I flew last time with this, I had the gauntlet and then the gun just went in there. And so you're filling that negative space 
and then you can kind of just stack things in between. Uh, depends on how many you invite me. <laughs> this year I have done so far, uh, well this month I'm doing three, so I don't remember how many else. I have at least two or three already scheduled for the next part of the year, but normally it just depends on what's around. I don't typically go to conventions unless I'm a guest just because they're very expensive. And this is my full-time job and I make enough to live and I make enough to like buy my food and pay all my bills and make costumes, but I don't make enough to spend a few thousand to go to other cons. So that's kind of how I do it. <laughs> Um, I'm always working. I, I like to make things. I'm trying to take a break and finish projects because I do tutorials on everything, but uh, typically I'm working on like two to three costumes or props at a time. So now that this is done, I'm currently working on the Way to the Dawn Keyblade from Kingdom Hearts, and I'll be starting most likely two cosplays, probably the female Thor from the comic version, as well as a uh, female gummy. So that'll be my next two months. <laughs> but uh, I always just like making things and there's no rush when making costumes, especially if you do go to school or if you have a full-time job. Don't kill yourself to make a costume. Uh, please prioritize your health and well-being and paying your bills first before sacrificing for your love of your uh, anime character. So yes, I see the lack. <laughs> For me, for designing a prop online, so again, reference images, in-game images. So for like Overwatch, I'll go into the game and I'll find the gun and then I'll try to do as many screenshots as I can. I try to get them as close to being flush from all angles, but sometimes, especially with Overwatch, they're normally like that. So you kind of have to make liberty. Specifically for blueprints, it's more like a drafting drafting method where I'll take my screenshots and I'll kind of find like the best few and I'll put them into Adobe Illustrator and I do a 2D line work kind of, of what I think I want it to do. I'll make adjustments. I got a small hand so let's say the uh, hand part, if it's way down here, I'll adjust it specifically Overwatch characters. They like to make their women a little disproportionate. They're upper half tends to be a little bit smaller and then they have legs that are as tall as me. So I do have to kind of shrink them down to normal realistic proportions. Sometimes I'll take out some parts. But from that, I will do the uh, Adobe Illustrator line work. And then if that's done, if it's just a blueprint, then I will do scaling. Typically I'll do the character, so if Mercy's holding her gun in game, I'll have it where she's holding it, and then I'll take the scale of her height, and I don't care what her height is, but I do my height, which is five foot two, and I will scale off of her, so whatever my image is, and then I'll scale her to five foot two, and then I know with that scaling, I'll have this going at the same time. So I have the then two scale of my gun and then I will convert it into a PDF file and then I will print it out and then I check, is the scale correct? Is it for some reason, because it's Overwatch, the gun is now this big and it doesn't quite work and then I'll kind of work back and forth off of that. That's how I do blueprints. Patterning typically is I do it by hand. I'll make up a prototype depending on certain pieces. So for Fishbone's head, not, not the jaw, just the head part. This one technically is a pattern part. And then I will do that. Um, I'll get my 2D line work of just the side shape. And then I'll put it into a 3D modeling program called Rhino 6. Do not invest in it. It is a jewelry specific 3D modeling software, that is stupid expensive. Do Blender, it's a lot cheaper because it's free. So you can do that. I'll then do a 3D model of that 
and get my shape. So I'll pull it out, I'll make it dimensional. And so for this pattern, it's specifically split down the center. And then this is one piece of EVA foam that's then scored on the back and then bent and then glued into the center. And so that's how I do specifically patterning. But like with fabric patterning, of course you can drape it um, and then you can get like pattern. There's like specific pattern softwares you can do where you can design your fabric online. So I have, right now I am in a two bedroom, two bath with a Zen room is what it is called. Again, this is my full-time job and the Zen room is my bedroom. So there's like a living room and then just like a little side room and I just have a, a screen door kind of thing. And then the master bedroom is my studio. And that's where I do, uh, if you've seen any of my live crafting streams on YouTube, that is where I do all my work. It has my uh, workbench. My main computer is in there for doing all of my cosplay work, my actual bench, my sewing machine. And then I have a smaller room that is dedicated just to like my photography equipment. It has my clothes in there, <laughs> my 3D printer, and then I have two shelving systems that keeps like this one's leather, this one's foam, uh, this one has like three boxes of thread and stuff like that. And then I have my garage downstairs that's attached for doing all of my airbrush paint. Framing shouldn't be an issue as long as it is properly sealed. So all of my EDA foam props, they are sealed with Createx colors, UVLS clear. Specifically, their satin is what this one is, but they come in matte as well as gloss. That is going to protect it from the sun, especially if you're in Texas. So we have very, very bad sun that just makes everything die in color and it'll protect it pretty much from the water for you. In terms of heat, EVA foam, you really don't want to leave it in the car overnight. If it's like a hundred for heat, it will reactivate your contact cement glue. Specifically, if you use a heat gun, all of your seams will then move, but the heat can also morph it. Good things to do for that though is for cons. So besides bringing a steamer to deal with wigs and clothes to get out wrinkles and stuff, I bring a heat gun to conventions with me. I did have a little bit of battle damage on this. Specifically, there was a nice kind of gunshot wound there. It's now a little bit of a permanent mark, but most of it came out. I also had a very major seam all the way across here. You don't really see it now, but all you do afterwards is with the heat gun, just lightly heat it up. I will note that by doing that, you can only do that by airbrush painting. If you're hand painting your EVA foam pieces with acrylic paint, do not use a heat gun on them afterwards as it will cause your paint to bubble and crack. And you don't want that. But uh, that's kind of, but um, that is it for me, guys. And um, yeah, have a wonderful rest of your con, guys. And thank you for coming. <laughs>